Good afternoon. I am at the King Farm in Woodstock, Vermont, and I'm here for an invasive species workshop, and I look forward to sharing it with you. The King Farm is a historic property that was bequeathed to the Vermont Land Trust, a nonprofit that promotes sustainable stewardship of farms and forests. It's a great place to explore, with trails open to the public for hiking and cross country skiing. But it's also a great place to learn about invasive plants and how to manage them. Take Autumn Olive, for example. This is an autumn olive that has been chemically treated. So you can kind of see its leaves have all these brown spots. That's kind of the sign that it's, it's on its way out. Um, these were treated in August, I believe. So it's super slow to show, especially on autumn olives. So, and we're not sure this one here. I'm really curious to see what it looks like next year because we know we treated it. It doesn't look that dead. We noticed one on our own property when we first arrived in the spring, but its beautiful flowers did not convince us to keep it. While our hill has been clear-cut in the past, I'm pretty sure it was never suitable for farming, and our invasive plants seem to have been planted one at a time by birds rather than cultivated by humans. On the King Farm, and many places like it, Autumn olive was deliberately planted in hedgerows and used as an ornamental plant. Althea Dacey works for Red Start Forestry, a consulting firm that has been involved in invasive species management on the King Farm for the past 10 years. She is a licensed pesticide applicator and she introduced us to some of the tools of her trade. But Althea is quick to acknowledge that not every landowner is comfortable with herbicides, and there are alternative methods for removing invasive species, especially on a smaller scale. For example, there are several ways to remove common buckthorn and glossy buckthorn, even when they are mature. These shrubs were cultivated as windbreaks and privacy hedges, and unfortunately, they both interrupt the natural process of ecological succession, inhibiting the regrowth of forest species. Cutting the stump and spraying it is, is a lot, m lot more direct of an application. And then as long as you get the, the key for cut stump method or cut treatment is to get the whole outside cambium treated. Um, so you can't leave like little, you know, just a little dot in the middle isn't going to do it. It's really in that cambium, which is like that outer layer of the bark. And when you cut, you can smother too, right? With, yep. With yeah. Burlap so, or... Yeah, burlap. And I've heard like a tuna fish can or a bean can, you can put those over the stump. I've heard you have to leave it there for like five years maybe. Um, so it's like a long time. Where... After the workshop, I discovered we had glossy buckthorn growing next to our own driveway. So I've started removing saplings and we'll have to deal with the slightly larger plants. So this is, I think other than maybe a tractor, one of the best ways to do some me mechanical removal. Which is hard to do without having a tree to latch onto, but basically the idea is you tuck that in around the base of a honeysuckle or a buckthorn or something like that, and then you, you pop it back and it rips the roots like right up out of the ground. Yeah, it looks and it awesome. works pretty well. Yeah. You don't want to break the roots because a lot of them, buckthorn, oh, uh -huh. honeysuckle, they'll re-sprout out of those. Yeah. So yeah. there's kind of that trade-off. And especially with, if you do this to a big plant, um, you can pull out most of the roots, but wherever they break off, the little ones are gonna pop out, but they'll still be connected to like a pretty large root system. So the best way is to get most of them with this and then use a mattock or something to get all those other ones out too. Another way of mechanical removal is with a chainsaw for the bigger ones, a handsaw for some of these little guys with bittersweet, it's really easy to just zip them off with a handsaw. If you don't apply herbicides to them, they're going to re-sprout. 
but you are removing the plants that are fruiting and flowering and re-sprouts are going to be smaller and possibly easier to deal with, although similar to this, their root system is still going to be huge, so they're going to be plenty productive and they're going to grow quickly. Um, so this is what we use in conjunction with the mechanical tool is the, is the chemical. So this is a buckthorn blaster like we were talking about. Looks like a bingo blotter. It has a little foam lid on, on the top. Doesn't spill any herbicide um, until it's like hit onto something. So really easy way. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome to deal with the lid and hit the stump, but it's not bad. And the blue is a dye just to help you see where you've treated. Okay. It's all just bittersweet growing up over the top of maybe some asters and grasses. Um, Oriental bittersweet is popular for autumn wreaths, which spread the seeds. In fact, if you search online for information about this plant, you will come up with two parallel sets of search results, one containing information about how to decorate with it, and the other with instructions on how to get rid of it. This is pretty typical to where a really heavy infestation gets sprayed. Things on top, like so this, is, this one with the yellow, that's all bittersweet. This looks like it's another autumn olive. This is what we're trying to kill is all these, but in order to do that, something that's bittersweet is like this vining, climbing thing. So it's really, it's really tough sometimes to get all of it and to make sure nothing else gets treated. You either have to take a really long time and snip every individual stem and treat the stem, or you need to have the kind of the longer term mindset of like kill these invasives Everything else can come in after. All of the species featured in this video are handsome plants that might inspire affection from those who don't know about their dark side. In one of our early videos, I showed pictures of a beautiful rose plant from a local park. And it wasn't until the King Farm workshop that I learned it too is an aggressive invader that was historically planted on purpose in hedgerows and used for landscaping. I have since pulled up a dozen small rose plants from the shoulder of our own driveway, and I'm glad I learned the truth about them before they had a chance to spread. I also used a trick I learned at the workshop and hung my uprooted weeds in a nearby tree to dry out the roots. This is where the mechanical treatment was used with the tractor and the flail and mower. Um, and then the chemical was used to treat the re-sprouts of all of these stumps. So it's almost impossible to believe now that we've got this nice big meadow, but there were, you know, 20 foot tall rows growing up over trees and autumn olive, um, bittersweet all over the place in here that um, you couldn't, couldn't deal with, couldn't mow them. They had to be mowed around, so they stuck around for years and years and just, like we were saying, were seed producers and spreading into other areas of the property. So this is a good example of one of the spots where you can use a couple different types of treatment methods. This is how they end up sticking around as they get a little too, too close to a fence post or here's a burning bush that's snuck in here too. So if those aren't cut when the rest of the field is, they'll just keep growing and be seed producers for the rest of the area. When I went looking for burning bush, I found that it was everywhere. It looks like a green hedge during spring and summer, then suddenly in the fall it turns bright red and produces abundant fruits that spread into nearby fields and forests. For an alternative to burning bush, consider blueberries or cranberries for a similar burst of fall color. There are re-sprouts, especially there's rose arm here and there. There's an autumn olive like what we were seeing back in there. Um, and that's what you're chasing down after 10 years later, trying to get those last little guys that are surviving. But all around those, goldenrod. Right. Oh, this southern. was incredible. A month ago, there was, yeah, there was milkweed everywhere and asters. It was a really great pollinator. I even asked them, did you guys succeed like, this, trying to get pollinators? Like, no, it's just, that's what happened. <laughs> it's just really, really cool to see. You know, a lot of people strive, they try really hard to get that kind of a meadow to grow. In case you're feeling motivated to learn more about invasive plants, 
I'll include some helpful links in the description below this video. But first, let's hear the takeaway message from the restoration efforts on the King Farm. As far as I know, one and done trick hasn't been found yet. <laughs> so I think the themes that we're getting out of today are try, 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 try again. Yep. Is there another try in there? I think there's another, yeah. And then come 10 years later and keep working. <laughs> Five years later, That's right. <laughs> Um, but this is a great success story, I think. You know, yes, we are treating an autumn olive or a rose here and there, but it's nothing like it was.